Hey there, Sharon Reynolds. We are welcome to day 315 of our Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. Today and for the next nine days, for a total of nine days, we are going to do a review of each of the different life framework areas. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships, communication, confidence, and contribution. Not in that order. I'm going to start with confidence today. We're going to do a summary and a check-in. What have we talked about this year? What did we cover? And we want to do a check-in. I'm doing one with myself today and I'm our action item today is for you to do a check-in with yourself. Go back. Hopefully you're keeping a notebook like I am for this year's challenge. And you can go back to September. We just talked about confidence in September. And you can check in and see where your progress is. How are you doing versus the goal that you set for yourself? Did you achieve the goal that you set for yourself in September? Or is it something that we need to revisit and make a few changes and tweaks to our plans and our strategies and our whole Goal process. Each day over the next nine days, today included, we're going to go over the goal process. And I'm not going to do it today. I'm just going to summarize what we talked about today. But in the write up in Guide 17 of the Get Up and Go Challenge private Facebook group, there is, I've used this framework and I've reviewed this and given a couple of examples. Actually, ChatGPT has, it. I'm experimenting with the AI this year to see if I can use that technology to support and supplement what I do in my daily challenges and what I do in my life. So, We'll go through the process in the notes every day for the, the nine days. But I'm going to talk about a summary. I went back through the calendar. Some months I, I noticed that I wrote on my calendar, my content, rough draft content calendar, the topics I talked about. Others, I'll have to go back through my handy dandy uh, annual challenge journal because I can go back, use magnifying glasses, blow it up and see what we talked about. I'll have to do that for a couple of months. I know February and March, I think for sure. I'll have to go back and do that for it. So let's summarize. Let's grab a magnifying glass and let's summarize. What did we talk about with respect to confidence just a couple of months ago, right? It's only November. It's, you know, mid-November. Oh, 11-11. Happy 11-11 today. 11-11 is my niece and nephew's wedding anniversary. Happy first anniversary to them. We all went down for their wedding in Texas. Great. Stayed in a tree house. I, my sister and I stayed in a tree house. My kids stayed in a tree house and my granddaughter and my pregnant daughter, who I now have two granddaughters by, stayed in the treehouse too, and it was super duper fun. Uh, freaked my mom out, but it was fun. But that's because they had the narrowest staircase I've ever seen to get up in the loft area. So nobody wanted to sleep up there, although my son did. Anyway, in the other one. So let's talk about confidence. What are some of the topics we talked about in confidence and with respect to confidence? We did this with a lot of the different areas and aspects of the of the life framework. I call it the life framework nine because I used to do seven areas of the life framework. And, and since 2021, when I joined a coaching program, I added confidence and communication to my life framework, what I look at, what I teach, how I share, how I think and structure my life to try to take some of the chaos out of it. So in September, we talked about what's your definition of confidence? What does confidence look like, feel like, smell like, taste like? How does it, how do you experience it? How do you define it. And that's the time, the beginning of each time we talk about one of these life framework areas, and we can do it anytime, right? We can review and we can say, is the definition that I've set up for confidence and feeling confidence right for me today? Because when I was younger, I just was young and naive and dumb and automatically felt confident in you know certain situations. Yet there were other situations I didn't feel the least bit confident in. I'm not going to divulge those, but there were a lot, right? There were a lot of times I felt confident and I knew what I was doing and I was sure of myself and I knew I could figure it out. And there were other areas, not so much. And I guess that's probably still true today in some instances. So we talked about what's our definition. How do we create a definition that empowers us to continually improve and feel the way we want to feel, experience the things we want to experience in specifically our area of confidence? Why? Because we talked about this, we've talked about this, but confidence is an underpinning to everything. It determines what will even step out of our comfort zone to try or do or see, etc. cetera. Uh, we talked about uh, <clears throat> our core values with respect to confidence. What is most important to me? What is most important to you with respect to our core values, our confidence core values? We talked about our confidence thoughts and we collected those. For a day, we thought of and talked about our confidence beliefs and what's the difference between a thought and a belief thought is something that just passes through our mind 80,000 plus of those a day according to statistics I have not verified that uh, but 
beliefs are the ones that we hang on to. And a lot of times we don't consciously hang on to them, right? Unless we're doing affirmations or visualization or something and consciously choosing those beliefs. Guess what? Our subconscious and our automatic amazing brains does that for us. Well, we talked about them letting go strategies because sometimes our fascinating miracle mind puts more than one belief in our subconscious and some of those conflict, some of those limit us and keep us safe, etc. cetera. Uh, we talked about and applied the SOAP framework and we're gonna talk about the SOAP framework. I'm probably gonna talk about the SOAP framework till the day I die. That's how powerful a tool it is. Uh, and it just stands for, again, story is the S in the SOAP framework. What's our current situation? What's our desired situation or story? Because we're always telling ourselves and other people stories of how we can or why we can and cannot do something or why we will or will not do something. O stands for options. We want to remember that there are infinite possibilities. We just have to be able to open up our mind enough to see and brainstorm different possibilities. So we usually make ourselves come up with at least 10 possible options before we even start analyzing anything. Uh, action, A stands for action. And that is we have to analyze those options that we have using some format and then <clears throat> uh, act. We have to act now. As soon as we come up with an idea and make a decision and a choice, we want to take some action toward it. And P stands for progress. How do we know we're moving in the direction we want to move when it comes to that particular <clears throat> excuse my voice today when it comes to that particular area or that particular situation uh, then we talked about uh, different topics self-esteem ego and identity being a yes and no per or no person uh, perfect timing visualization uh, visualizing our desired outcomes specifically uh, creating our own world we talked about the lifeline. We did the lifeline exercise. We did life is blank and blank. We talked about being solution focused. We talked about how experience builds confidence. We talked about uh, envisioning more, acting less, because sometimes we act, 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 act without thinking about it. And that can lead us into more problems and down more wrong roads. And if we took a few minutes, visualized, thought about the outcome that we want, and then determined and took an action. Uh, again, lifeline exercise talked about the life framework and how all the different areas interact with one another. We talk about that every month uh, because they do and it's important that we think about that. So when we change something, say in our their area of confidence, we don't want it to negatively impact another area or aspect of our life. Say you decide to get plastic surgery, uh, thinking that physically that's going to and confidently that's going to make you feel better and all of a sudden it causes a bunch of emotional or uh, mental challenges because you don't identify with the person that you become based on that plastic surgery. I'm not sure that's a great example. Never had plastic surgery, but you know what I mean. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about mirror work. We talked about praising the success and actually celebrating the success of other people helps us to be more confident. Why? Because what we put out into the world is what we get back from the world. And then the seven step goal process. And I actually did body positivity. I didn't remember that, but that's why I went back and looked. But I did body positivity as uh, my confidence goal. And I will check in with that today and see how I'm doing. I would say a little better, but not necessarily awesome. There's always room for improvement in any area and aspect of my life. So that's a, my that's a, my summary, quick, brief summary of an entire month's worth of, of, of topics and content. Again, in September, Guide 17, you'll find a write-up. In September of Guide 16, you'll find all the videos from September if you missed one. Or if there's a specific topic you want to look up, you can just put it in the, the sidebar of that particular private group page and get more information. There's tons of information available because I've been talking about some of this stuff for years, actually decades. Okay, so what's our action item today? Go back, review the goal that you set for yourself with respect to confidence. Have you accomplished it? If not, are you on track to accomplish it by the date you set? Remember, we're doing these by the end of this year. And if not, what do you need to do to tweak and change and get back on track? If you need help with this, I am here for you. Just message me or, you know, find a way to contact me. It's not that hard. I share my contact information all the time. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.